But yeah, hello, 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 family and friends. It's I again. It's I. I'm back. I'm back. So I thought I'd squeeze one in now because um, unfortunately the brunette's friends are over, so there won't be no time to do many podcasts because you know when other people come around, your home studio turns into a place to welcoming guests, family and friends, which is annoying because I hate people coming over. I have to be honest. I hate it. Hate it. Hate it. I kind of like I like being on my own all the time, right? And when I'm on, no. You know what? I like being on my own. And when I'm on my own, I like being on my own. Does that make sense? I want to be on my own. No, but like, you know, when you're at home, you do, the last thing you want is company. It's people. You see that when you go outside, right? On the commute to work, at work, people telling you their inane conversations, what they did on the weekend, what their boyfriend's doing, what their girlfriend didn't do, what they're eating for lunch, their holiday. It's the fucking same thing. And that's what package comes in. Everyone has to pretend like it's the first time they've seen one. Ah, oh, Amazon package comes in. What did you get? Does none of your business. It's the same flipping shit, right? All the time. So when you're at home, the one thing I would like to do is just to kind of be on my own. On my own, right? No one near me. Don't touch me. Don't look at me. Don't even breathe my way. Just leave me alone. Don't want any conversation about anything. Don't want to talk about stuff. Don't want to become friends. We are friends already. I'm going to see you on the outside world, right? Let me call you. Let me text you. And I'll meet, have a drink, have some fun. Then I go home. That's it. None of this, like, you know, in my... It's like, um, what, what's that language they have in the um, work world? Um, spaces, right? I don't want you in my space. They have that thing about it, right? The spaces you occupy. I'm occupying my space. Let me have my space, right? That's my space. Not my space, but my space. I'm not a businessman. I'm a business man. My space. Space mine. Fuck, man. But it's hard to say, in it? To people like, I don't want people to come around. But it's hard to you can't really say that, can you? you got to be like, you got to play it. got to play it. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Come around. Right. Come around. Right. Right. Then you're like, fuck you. Fuck that. Right? These are like, shit. <laughs> DJ like no yeah <laughs> that's, how oh, that's how you gonna be saying like yeah no yeah yeah, yeah nothing in the your head at the same time but anyway whatever man <laughs> I wish you know sometimes you wish you could be like you know what's that word what's that book I've got um um no is it radical honesty what's that book there's a book called is it radical honesty there's a guy that did like these these seminars about it and I think Google maybe took a lot of the lessons learned from it and put it into the employee handbook and put it as part of their HR processes. Um, I think it's Radical Honesty. There's a book called Radical Honesty. I'm pretty sure it's that. And it kind of, you know, stiff, it kind of proposes the idea of trying to be as honest as you can in every given situation. And, you know, it kind of expands on the ideas that kind of Jordan Peterson speaks about quite highly about trying to tell the truth, being a truthful person. But this is like Radical Honesty. This is like, you know, Letting your you're letting your subordinates or people that you work with know exactly when they're falling short of your standards, but also making it known when they meet your standards. Because we've all been in workplaces, isn't it? Right? Where I necessarily, you know, I always talk about I don't care about workplaces. You know, I don't for the most part. Don't give a flying fuck. I just do them because you know they allow me to uh, um, keep up my standard of living and pursue my other interests. But you do know that you know every place you've been in, working wise, where it's been really contentious and fractious, it's been because for the most part, it's because the people that you're working under don't necessarily have that candor with you don't i'm not necessarily honest right some of the, there's a lot of backbiting a lot of snaky moves a lot of um a lot of um purposeful misdirections a lot of ambiguity withholding information loads of really shitty things that don't really you don't really like as a person right um one example could be pay right imagine you're gonna you're all gonna get paid in the company imagine everyone's gonna get paid late cool no worries just let everyone know, isn't it? That's not a bad, bad thing, isn't it? Something stuff happens in businesses, not all, the, you know, and things happen. People can people are understanding. Just say, hey guys, we're gonna get paid late this month. We're all getting paid late. Please wait our updates. No problem. But instead, some companies don't do that. They kind of do that thing where you know somebody owes you money. I know I've heard I've heard of this before, right? Where if someone owes you money, especially in America, they do it more. They don't do it here in the UK. But if someone owes you money in America, for some reason, I don't know why, maybe their monetary values or the things that they accept are a little bit different than us here in the U- in Europe or the, us here in the UK and maybe in Europe. But it's for some reason people in America accept checks if someone owes them money. Like, oh yeah, take the check. Sorry, man. I'm really sorry about this. So then imagine if someone's owed you a hundred quid or two hundred quid or five hundred quid for ages, five hundred dollars, whatever maybe, you know, fuck it. You just take the check anyway, you, you chuck it into the bank. 
usually, I think the reason why they do that is because usually the person that lent it to you isn't struggling for money. You're the one struggling for money. That's why you lent it off that person. So they don't, they're not necessarily chasing you back because they desperately need the money to eat. They're chasing you back because it's our principle of like, hey, I lent you that money when you really needed it. Now give it back to me, right? That's how it is. So I think because of that, they play on that kind of naivety or that kind of good grace and they take your, they take the check, put it in the bank. But then, of course, after three days, because what happened, the check bounces because there's nothing on in that account to kind of, you know, take from it. So you would, so people do that with themselves um, interpersonally, right? To like, uh, and, and the reason I've heard people do that is because they're hoping that within those three days, they'll be able to raise the money, put it into an account so that by the time it clears on your side, the money can come through. So by the time your, your bank tries to um, credit to your account, it will come through. But when it comes to pe- working in a working environment, there's no real need for that, right? Because we're all working here. We, this affects everybody in the, in, in the office space. It affects me as a... It affects this guy as the single dude who skates every weekend and just wants to have the money so he can go for another skate tour with friends. It affects the single mum over there. It affects the married couple. It's like everyone gets, gets affected by it. Just tell people. Radical honesty. But they don't. They just withhold the information and they keep it strong. So sometimes you would ha- like it if more workplaces, people in general, human beings, friends... We're just honest. If anything, thinking about it now, the only people that are really honest with you are your friends, really, aren't they? Sometimes you have that benefit of your parents or your family being quite honest, right? You grew up in a house where, you know, your mum doesn't fuck around, your dad doesn't fuck around, they tell you exactly what they think about you and what you're doing. But sometimes people are unlucky where they have um, enablers as parents, people that kind of, you know, uh, tell them, you know, the sun shines out of their ass and stuff, that they can do no wrong, blah, 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 which really does them a disservice because what ends up happening is that they end up, usually looking for friends that exude those same sort of um, feelings or opinions about them. So they end up surrounding themselves with friends that are quite similar to their mum or dad because they like that kind of person, right? Then they wouldn't necessarily put up with somebody that's going to be telling them how it is or calling them out on their bullshit. So again, it, 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 affects, it affects you in weird ways as you, as you kind of traverse this crazy thing that we call life. But in, again, in general, I just wish things were a little bit more, you know, a little bit more honest-led. I was a little bit more, you know, everything came at you as they were, so you knew where you stood and could go from there, really. But it doesn't, you know, it's kind of one of those kind of words. It kind of, we live in a world where you have to kind of, you know, there's a lot of nuance. You have to kind of pull the codes out from the mess that's going around. You have to kind of figure it out. It's a hazy picture. You've got to kind of bring it to focus yourself. You can't exactly help. Someone's not going to be like, hey, by the way, that thing over there hasn't been done, right? You're going to have to find out because, you know, your boss is giving you the cold shoulder. Right, and you're like, hold on, why is it being acting so weird? And you think, oh yeah, shit. And then you realize something that you did wrong, as opposed to just someone coming up to you and saying, hey, by the way, that 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 wasn't cool, wasn't wasn't called for. You need to do better, or you're gone. Oh, no problem, right? Then you know what to do. You, you you've been given the remit of where you, you've been given. You basically it's been laid there for you in black and white. You know exactly where you stand. There's no ums and ahs. There's no to and fro. There's no oh, did I misinterpret that? No, you know exactly where you stand. Then you can decide: do I stay? Do I go? But you know. What do I know?